Hi everyone, and welcome to this chapter of Flutter Animations course. In this chapter, we're going to talk quickly about implicit animations. Now, we've been creating explicit animations up to this point in the other chapters right before this, where we created an animation controller, for instance, and an animation object, uh, or a tween and curves, etc. But implicit animations are kind of like widgets that you can drop into your application and that allow you to go, for, for instance, from point A to point B without you having to create an animation controller. So that's you creating an implicit animation. So you're not explicitly creating it as the name indicates. Okay, so in this uh, chapter, we're going to talk about this particular example, I'll just bring the simulator to the screen, as you can see, here we have a very simple application. And there is an image in the middle. And also we have a button, you press this button, you can see the container getting enlarged with a simple curve. Uh, it's bouncing in and out. And then you can also zoom out. So zoom in and zoom out. So this example is created purely using implicit animations. And again, this is, I mean, this is quite perhaps a useful feature to have even in a simple application. However, it's something that is very basic to create. And the reason I'm putting it in here in this course is that we cover pretty much every aspect of animations in Flutter. You can't talk about animations in Flutter without mentioning implicit animations. So and for those of you who are more advanced users and looking for more advanced content, then perhaps the rest of the videos that are to come will be of more interest to you. But also there may be some stuff in this video that you can learn as well. So let's without further ado, let's go ahead and create the uh, project for this. So I'm going to bring up terminal. So let's say uh, flutter create and let's say example five, I believe we are at and we say org se pixel and for those of you who know me i always specify the organization it's just so much easier uh, to do from the beginning and let's say code example five all right uh, right here let's say select we first select the device okay and i'm gonna say 14 plus and let's go into json and let's say zoom level and that is going to be five all right. And we go into main dart in here. I'm just going to drop my flutter scaffold application, save it, and then select oh, we've already done select device. I'm just going to compile this. All right. So let's go back to the app itself and see how it is created. You can see it is a container in here. And then we also have a little button. So and then they're created inside a column, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so it's just vertically displayed on top of each other. But we also have an image in here. So let's go ahead and create an image. So uh, this is this is one of the tricks I usually do. If I want to place an image in here with some subfolders, I first go and create a file. And then I specify the path, I say assets. And then I say um, images, for instance, and then I say one JPEG. All right. And then it creates the folders for me, then I can delete this. <laughs> All right. So you can also just say create folder, you don't have to say create file, but usually I'm actually creating files like a JSON or something. But you can also say create folder and specify the entire folder path. All right. So in this images, I'm just going to drag a, a wallpaper and that I already have is actually my wallpaper, which is sitting behind this. Oh, uh, it is here at the back. Actually, is it? No, it's not. It's not that one. It's another wallpaper that I sometimes use, but I'm not using it right now. It just happens <laughs> to be that that case. So let's go ahead and bring this wallpaper. I'm going to go and find a folder that we just created and say wallpaper and then drop it there. OK, there is the wallpaper. I believe it's actually quite a large image, so it is not a small one. All right. So now that we have that, I'm going to close this and let's close the inspector. Let's go to our pop spec YAML. And we're going to go specify then the path to this image. And we're going to say, uh, let's see here, assets, I'm going to uncomment this. And then we say the folder was assets, uh, slash images like this. And then the image is uh, wallpaper wallpaper jpeg if it is correct then it should be displayed here oh it's it doesn't exist assets images wallpaper jpeg it looks fine to me i don't really know why it is the asset file assets images wallpaper jpeg doesn't exist creating the file or fixing 
oh i can see now the problem is that i created this folder under vs code and that's just stupid so uh, i'm gonna drag this and see if i can drop it outside somewhere <clears throat> it, if it allows me and let me see if i can drag it like down here somewhere uh perhaps here somewhere to the root folder uh, if i did it correctly let's see if if i've actually done it correctly now assets yeah seems to be in the root folder now so i'm just gonna save this and see there we go the image is right here right now that we have the image let's just close this pop spec yaml and we can go into our main dart file and in here uh, all we really have to do is just to uh, go ahead and create basically the column so let's see how we're gonna structure this let's say that we have uh, the body here uh, let's say body and usually as you as you probably know me already I go ahead and create my component like inner components first okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first create a text button so I'm gonna say that's my text button and the first parameter on pressed let's say on pressed like this and let's go to the second component which is the child I'm just gonna say text hello all right uh, let's see here here boom and let's see how our application looks like now if I bring up our simulator here okay so I can see I added a comma in here so let's remove that we just have a hello and let's then put this rapid inside a column like this and then we also need to have an image all right so what I'm gonna do in here is to um, to display the image is to actually create a container for it and the reason behind it is that we have an implicit animation in flutter which is called animated container okay so if we create a simple container just to display the image now we can just switch it later to an animated container to freely and easily get that animation effect that uh, we saw at the beginning of the video so let's go inside this uh, children here and say that we have a container all right and this container then is going to have let's see uh, like this let's say that it has a child all right and then we're going to dump the image in here so let's say image dot asset and the asset was i believe assets images wallpaper dot jpeg like this and i can see the wallpaper wallpaper here to the left hand side uh, really good I mean, it is complaining right now, saying that container isn't necessary because we could just jump and start dump the image in there. And it is correct because we don't really need the container because it's not doing anything. But soon we're going to swap this into an animated container. So that's the reason this guy is right here. So let's see how it looks like. There we go. This is our application right now. OK, so let's go into this uh, column and say that we want the content to be in the center. So let's say main axis alignment and we're going to say center. Uh, main axis alignment center there we go so it's it's starting to look a lot more like this example right at least when it was zoomed in so one thing we could do is to take care of this button title you can see when the image is zoomed in then you can see a button that's a zoom out and when the image is zoomed out you can see the button that's a zoom in all right so what we could do is to create two variables in here and let's say var and we can convert this to a stateful widget right because we're gonna actually work with implicit animations and implicit animations is one of the keys to to implicit animations is that you need to do set state on them actually so you need to do set state in order to get the animations to kick off all right because you don't have uh, your animation controller that you can just say start the animation controller the way to communicate with an implicit animation is usually through set state so let's convert this home page to a stateful widget all right and let's create a variable in here and we say var is zoomed in and by default we're we're not zoomed in all right and then we also are going to have a variable that says var button title and the by default since we're not zoomed in we're going to say by default the title is zoom in all right so let's take this button title and then chuck it in here so we say the button title is that and it's not a const anymore right there we go good and then we can go when the button is pressed to do a set state and then say now we're zoomed in all right so let's say um, set state there we go and we say is zoomed in is equal to not zoomed in let's see because it's final did I define it as final right these should be variables okay 
I think I defined them as variables, but Visual Studio Code actually corrected it because I didn't have a setter for them. So if I comment these out, you can see it says the value of the field isn't used. Try removing. And then if I save, they are converted automatically to final. So that's pretty nice, actually. Okay. And I think that's one of my fix uh, commands that I have. So if I say user settings, and if I look at Dart, I have a lot of code actions on save. And I believe add required fix all trailing this expression create constructor no i actually don't have that but it is possible that fix all is doing that all right so if i comment this fix all go back here change these guys to var and then press save i can see that they're not changed to final but if i uncomment this and i have fix all and i go here and press save then they're converted to final okay so now we know the source of fixing those variables from var to final it is source fix all okay good for me as well to know uh, now let's go back in here in set state we say is zoomed in is going to be flipped and bottom title if we are zoomed in is going to say zoom out otherwise it's going to say zoom in so i'm just going to save this and actually restart the application let's go here this is the completed application and this is our application so by default we're uh, we're zoomed out all right but this container isn't reflecting that so if i press zoom in then the button says zoom out and then you see it's flipping that all right it's just this container now we have to take care of so what we could do is to say okay uh, we have some sort of a default width for this image so if i bring the completed application you can see that this is the default width let's define that somewhere so let's let's go here and then I'm going to say const default width like this. Uh, default width is uh, 100. All right. Like this. And let's, let's make it a double. And what we're going to do is to define a variable in here. So we say we have a width because we're going to, uh, in set state, change this width and then ask this container to adjust itself to that width. All right. So let's say var uh, width is we start with default width then we go to this container and we say that its width is equal to the width that we've defined there we go and then in here we change this width so we say when uh, let's go ahead in here and we say uh, width like this is equal to if we're zoomed in then we're going to get the entire screen width so i'm going to say media query of context and then i'm going to say size dot width Otherwise, take the default width. All right. Good. So that takes care of the width. And also in here, we have the width for, oh, it's changed the size box. I didn't want that. Let's change it to container. <laughs> it's my Visual Studio code that's is fix all actually, which is doing this. But don't worry about it. I mean, this should actually be container. So in your head, read this as container. Okay. It's that fix all thing that is messing this up as well. Or actually, it's trying to fix it. But it, for us, it's messing it up. So there we go. Here we have that. Uh, so I think also, to be honest with you, in this, I wish we could put this inside of a row so we could extend this. So let's say uh, this is inside a row, uh, wrap it with a row, and then I'm going to say uh, main axis alignment is center. Main axis alignment center. Okay, so now it's in the center. But you see now the width is changing as we expect, but there is no animation. So let's go and define that animation. I mean, it should look like this, you can see. All right, so there are two things for, I believe two things for, actually one thing perhaps for the animation. Let's say that we define a curve. So in here we say var curve, and by default we say the curve is bounce out. So bounce out like this, and that's our default curve, which is this one, you see, bounce out. And then we change the curve when we're going in okay so that's our our default curve and we say it's a variable then let's go in here and inside instead of size box change it back to container and then we want to create that implicit animation all right and the way to create it is just to say that this is an animated container okay now it says okay but what is the duration so let's say that duration is a const duration milliseconds 370 uh like this and 370 is a value that i believe i mean i i've worked with animations quite a lot and this is also coming from like very early ios days when you had animations and like ui view animations and one of the key durations for animations that are pleasing to 
the <laughs> normal human eyes is that the animation takes no longer than 500 milliseconds and more than 300 milliseconds. So anywhere between 300 and I would say 300 to 400 is like the most pleasing animation duration. If it is longer, then you kind of get bored. And to be honest with you, I'm actually not a fan of apps that use a lot of animations because the apps that I use, uh, I'm usually a super user for, for those apps. So if I really use an app, and it could be, for instance, a shopping application where I want to go and buy some stuff online, then I really, really don't want it to do a lot of animations because as a super user, I just want to be able to tap here and there super fast to get to from, get from point A to point B. So when you're working with animations, I've seen a lot of people like go and write apps that are just full of animations everywhere. And I usually cannot appreciate apps like that. Okay, it has to be a very special case for me to appreciate. I think animations, like a lot of animations, usually belong to games. That's my opinion. All right. So I've seen apps like people do pizza delivery apps. Everything's just rotating. The pizza's rotating and then you tap here and something flies off the screen. And I mean, it's it's a nice concept, but I probably won't use that. App. <laughs> so just just so you know, the duration of your animation is very important. And that was just a little derailment from the main topic. But the reason I'm putting 370 in here is just simply because duration usually needs to be between 300 to 500, unless you have a very specific reason not to have it in this uh, in this range. And also, just to note, this particular duration is usually most pleasing on mobile devices. So I'm not saying that this is for every platform. On the web, it may be different. And on desktops, it may be different, but this is mainly for mobile devices where people usually use an app for like um, a minute tops, something like that. All right. And also this minute I'm kind of making up, but usually like the data that I have from the apps that I've developed, I can see that like a lot of people just use it quickly, get to get from point A to point B and then close the app because they're done. They've done what they needed, they needed to do. So and you probably then don't appreciate lots and lots of animations. Uh, that was just a side note. So now that we're done with that, I change this to animated container. Let's go ahead and set the properties on it. So we say the curve of this animation is equal to curve that we've specified. All right. And also the asset is ready. Seems like pretty much everything is ready here. So we could just save this. And then let's go in here and also change the curve. So we say uh, the curve is also different if we're zooming in 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 or out so curve let's change it back to a var uh, here okay so we say if we're zoomed in then we're gonna say that bounce out bounce in out let's say bounce in out okay and then if we're zoom it zoomed out if you're zoomed in and then otherwise if we're zoomed out let's say bounce out and you can play with these to be honest with you curves yourself as well to see like the effect that you get so let's see how it looks like there we go and here it is the animated container okay and this is an implicit animation because you can see we're just simply doing uh, a a few like just one set state and changing some parameters to get this nice little animation all right and it could be useful in some applications, to be honest with you, it's not that difficult to imagine that something like this could be useful. Okay. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, just let me know. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hit the thanks button at the bottom of the screen if this video was useful to you. So see you in the next one.